All right, so we're ready to create a reflection of an object in a line in GeoGebra. So at GeoGebra.org, we're opening that app. We're going to click on Start Creating and then Geometry, which should bring us to our blank workspace. All right, first thing I want to do, I want to turn on a couple of features. First of all, the axes. You can do that one of two ways. You can either in your Chromebook do a double tap, which will bring up that right-click menu. And you can choose axes and grid off of that. Or you can go up here to this menu with the triangle and the circle. Choose axes. Choose the grid. And I'm going to do a couple of other things as well. Here in the settings menu, um, under x-axis, I want to set my distance to 1. And what that does is whenever I scroll in and out, if I don't have that selected, if I don't have that turned on, then it's going to, at times, change the scale on the axes. So maybe instead of each box being 1, 2, 3, I might see 2, 4, 6, etc. And I prefer to see a distance of 1. I'm going to do the same thing for the y-axis. And you want to make sure there's a 1 in that box. If there's not, just type 1 in there. Okay, so that's going to take care of my axes. And then here I want to click on these three little squares and turn on my algebra view. The algebra view brings up a side panel over here where I can type things in. I can type in coordinates of points. I can type in equations of lines, etc. And you'll see me using that as well. All right, so let's center our axes a bit. I'm going to scroll out just a bit. Remember, you can scroll by using the two-finger tap and move up or down on your little mouse pad. All right, now then, I want to create a triangle. And there's a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to draw three points to begin with. I'm just putting these anywhere for now in your homework or in your assignments. You're more than likely going to be given points to use, specific points. So there I've used the point tool to draw those two. You can also over here on the left side create points by just typing in the coordinates. So like for example, if I wanted to point at 7, 2, I'd type it just like I would typically type a point with the parentheses and the comma in between and hit enter and it's going to create that point as well. So you can either do it with the point tool or you can type them in over the left. It's really just a matter of preference. All right, so now that we've got the vertices, let's make ourselves a polygon. So we're choosing the polygon tool. Click on each of the vertices. Now remember, you've got to close the polygon, so go back to that first vertex and make sure you close it. So that's the object we're going to reflect. Now I need a line to reflect it across. So over here on the left, I'm going to reflect it across the line y equals negative 1. And you just type it in like an equation. You could do y equals x plus 2. You could do whatever line you want to type in. But you type in the equation of the line. If it's the x-axis or the y-axis, you'd want to type in x equals 0 or y equals 0. But ultimately, you just type the equation in and hit Enter. And you can see that that line then appears here horizontally where y is negative 1. And now we're ready to do the reflection. So your transformations menu is this one here with the two dots, the red and the blue, and the line in between them. Kind of looks like a reflection. That's the one we're going to use. Reflect about a line, that first tool. And you can see in our directions at the bottom of the screen, it says select an object to reflect and then a line to reflect across. So I want to select my object. Notice how when I moved my cursor into the center of that polygon, the sides became much darker and thicker, indicating that it's ready to be selected. So you click on that, and then come to the line. And there again, you can see your tool changes to an arrow, and the line gets kind of bold. Click on the line, and you should get the reflection. Now sometimes, once in a while on a Chromebook, it just kind of glitches more or less, and it doesn't reflect. You just need to try it again. But you click in the interior of the polygon, and click on the line itself, and that should reflect it for you. Now, a few things happen. Not only do we see this here up here on the opposite side of that line of reflection, but over on the left, we can also see the A prime, B prime, and C prime, the coordinates of those points. I mean, you can get them by looking at the coordinates here with the axes, but they are present over there as well. Now, these other things that you're seeing, the, the lowercase a, b, and c, those are the side lengths of the two triangles, and we can see that the side lengths are the same. Remember, a reflection is an isometry, so it preserves those distances. We could also go through and measure the angles in the triangles and show that the three angles in triangle ABC would be congruent to the three angles in triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. But ultimately, those are just there 
because we've chosen the Polygon tool. It automatically provides the side links when you use that tool. And that's how you take care of a reflection. Create the object with the Polygon tool, type in the equation of the line, and then choose your reflection tool, click on the object in the line, and that's it.